Well, hello everybody. My name is Sean and uh, I install solar on RVs and uh, this is our shop and we're installing solar on an RV right now. <laughs> I want to tell you all about it. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, how much solar we're putting on the roof, how, why. Uh, we'll also be talking about batteries, showing you how we're doing those and all the other equipment to make it worthwhile and to have it work properly. So that means inverters, solar chargers, fusing protection, all that kind of stuff. So uh, if that is of any interest to you, stick around. Love to have you along. So up on the roof here, we've got uh, some solar, right? This is a grand design reflection. Um, we're going to try and work with the existing, I think this is a 380-ish, 300 some plus panel. We're leaving it in the system. And uh, we got tilt kits on all the rest, so we'll see how that's going to work out. Uh, we haven't done tilt kits in a long time, so that's something new if uh, for our regular viewers. So, um, running two different panels and two different strings. Uh, what we're doing is we're leaving this system alone. This is one panel going to one controller. We're going to leave that. That's stock with Grand Design, we're gonna leave it. We are gonna add all these other panels running through this port and these wires here. This is the satellite access port. There's a pull string in there. You pull up the white, these wires and uh, there you go. So that's what we did there. And then uh, as far as wiring up the panels goes, we're gonna do sets of two. So that means these two are in series, these two are in series, and these ones can tilt this way, these ones can tilt that way. The two up here, they're going to be able to tilt this way. The ones in front, a little tricky. Um, part of the reason this customer wanted the tilt was actually to get under and clean them. So he's not all that concerned that this one's going to be a little tricky to actually uh, tilt all that much. So it's beautiful out right now, actually. Uh, early October, Minnesota. I think it's 60s today. It's been in the high 70s actually all week. We might touch 80 later in the week. This is crazy, but I'm here for it. All right, last day on this install. Uh, we got the solar panels put up there. We do have to secure them down still. So uh, we'll show you a little bit more of that. But uh, just wrapped up putting the uh, board and all the equipment in that bay there, in the front bay. So I'm gonna tell you all about what's in there why it's there, how I put it in, things like that. And then we'll go over uh, some of the different electrical connections and show you how we put the servo display screen in, which is always a little bit tricky. Uh, sometimes more than others, this one was a little bit of a challenge. In here, oh, we've got the board. Everybody talks about the board, and this is typically what we do. Uh, this board was I would say 80, 90% completed in our shop, right through that wall, except we used the door. And <laughs> and uh, yeah, put, put it together in there because it's easier. We have a saying around here, let's do the work where we can do our best work. That means where we're comfortable, where we're not stressed, and we can do the best work. Some of the other things I had to do in here, like wiring up the solar breakers, landing the wires here for the multi-plus, things like that. Um, so let's just, we're going to go around all the different components here and I'm going to start with the batteries here. So these are the, uh, SOK 206 amp hour, uh, heated lithium. Tell you what people have been asking me lately, why using these when there's bigger options, uh, maybe better options, things like that. There are better options out there potentially, um, in the same way that, you know, there's better cars. Uh, you got to pick what's right for you. What's going to work within your budget, your needs and your space. So in this case, what we really like about these is it's a nice compact form factor, but we also like, um, that we can service these. So the, the batteries out there that we can get into and service if we need to on the rare occasion, uh, is not a very large list and we do work with a number of those other companies as well uh, So enough about that. That's the battery. We chose three of these plenty of power for a full timing couple If as long as you're not trying to run the air conditioner all night or something like that um, We use 4 out cabling. That's really important I've seen biggest danger thing I see out there is not having enough cables the other thing I like to do uh, when we're doing the cabling on here is we will 
uh, try and flatten the bottoms of these lugs. They are not always flat, but then also pay attention to the ordering here. We've got our main lug on the bottom and our paralleling lug on top. That way energy can come from the top and the bottom because those connections are imperfect. And that's just what I've found. Uh, you wanna be able to get the energy as efficiently as possible from here to the next point. So that's what I would recommend doing there. And then we cover up our positives because we don't want anything to happen there. The other thing here is this die hole breaker. We talk about these quite a bit. And this time we mounted it directly on the links. We did have to nibble away at that a little bit to make that work, but that's one less connection. Connections in produce uh, resistance and resistance makes heat. And we don't want that. These die hole breakers are not only the on off switch, but also, like I said, the breaker. Uh, they stay much cooler than your traditional shut off switches. Uh, look online, so many people have burned them up. Uh, they're just, in our experience, they're unreliable. I really recommend these. These come in uh, 400, 200, double pole, single pole, all kinds of options. Uh, hopefully we're going to start selling them on our website, but we're forever working on that. Uh, of course, got the links, or not the links, the uh, uh, smart shunt there. And we got a little voltage adapter here, so that little green light is on for the links distributor. That way the customer knows if a fuse has blown, and we usually keep a hot spare in there so all the lights are green, or the single light is green, rather. Um, if you're using a 4 out lug on that fuse, you do have to nibble it off a little bit. That's something to keep in mind. What else here? Yeah, we got the servo. Uh, yeah, the Serbo GX-S, the MPPT 150 by 100 up there, and our solar breakers. We did, oh, hit my head. We did wire the Jaboni existing solar in there so the customer can turn both those off. From the factory, I do not believe you can turn that solar off. I think that's a mistake. Uh, a lot of the factory systems don't allow you to do that. Then of course here we've got the Multi Plus 3000, the Victron Multi Plus 3000, two by 120, that's important. Uh, a lot of systems have the generator, or not generator, but inverter prep, and like this one does too. This, uh, I don't know, that inverter might be coming out, I need to talk with the customer. But this two by 120, the magic on that, if you don't know, is you get four wire in. That means your full 50 amps is transferred by this system. And so when you're on inverting power, all of your outlets work. Everything works inside. It's super nice. You don't have to figure out, oh, what are my inverter outlets? What aren't? No, everything works. You don't need to stress about it. Um, and speaking of that, yeah, this is how we've been, uh, well, we land these in here a number of different ways, but I've been doing this a little bit more. I feel like this is a lot more serviceable and easier to get each wire in there individually. And when you're putting these in here, make sure if you're doing this, if you're watching this video, cause you want to do it, uh, strip back what they say to here. Uh, and that's almost an inch and you put them up there and you pull them. You always got to pull test them. They don't always, there's these barbs in there that kind of grab onto the wire one way. You want to make sure that, um, all the barbs are grabbing properly. That's really important. See a number of these burned up too. I really wish Victron would go back to a screw down terminal. Uh, yeah, we got our other things in here. We do have a temp battery temp monitor. Uh, there's no temperature compensation on the charging, but I do recommend having this uh, battery temp monitor somewhere on the system. And typically what we do, uh, we'll get it in here. I'll just like to tuck it underneath this strap. There we go. Something like that. And a lot of people or customers have said, hey, there's this thing just hanging out here. The reason why I do that and I don't put it on a lug is because the lugs are gonna get hotter than here. And it's gonna give you an inaccurate reading. I wanna know the temperature of the battery, not the temperature of the lug. Uh, what else we got going here? Oh, we also added, I gotta clean this up a little bit. Um, so my sealant is running, but uh, we've added a external solar port for the customer and we may tuck some of these wires back up there once we get the ends on it but this allow the customer to add some ground mount panels easily and that's running in parallel with the jaboni there because that's just a 30 amp controller figured why not that way it won't mess up that one there's only one panel on the roof and i told the customer 
if you can run your panels in that 36, 38 volts, you should be able to run a panel in parallel with what's up there because that's the same type of panel. You should be able to run two panels in parallel in different conditions without a problem. Interesting, we were talking about batteries here not that long ago. Uh, just had a customer call who did not buy batteries from us. They actually bought batteries from Batteries Plus. They ended up getting discharged or somehow being put into a protection state and they couldn't get them out of them. They tried it for, uh, I think a couple of days, could not get them to go and eventually they did not honor the warranty. I don't know if it's all Batteries Plus, I'm not trying to put them on blast necessarily, but interesting we were talking about batteries here not that long ago. Uh, just had a customer call who did not buy batteries from us. They actually bought batteries from Batteries Plus. Uh, they're in-house. They bought batteries from, uh, so those batteries, uh, they ended up getting discharged or somehow being put into a protection state and they couldn't get them out of them. They tried it for, uh, I think a couple of days, could not get them to go. And eventually they did not honor the warranty. I don't know if it's all batteries plus I'm not trying to put them on blast necessarily, but, uh, you can't always, more, what am I trying to say? Almost every battery company out there will try and screw you on the warranty. That's the truth of it. Almost every one of them. They're going to drag their feet on it. They are not going to jump to send you a new battery. They're going to try and get out of it, delay, deny, all that stuff. Which is, I mean, I'm not saying we've had that problem with us okay, but that's one of the reasons we like to be able to get in the battery. So... Let's hope that the battery company honors their warranty. Let's hope that they do all that stuff. But what if they don't? Let's make sure we can get in that battery and service it and jump it to life. That's a lot of times all these batteries need when they go bad. They just need a BMS uh, like restart or you gotta jump it internally, charge them up, charge up the cells bypassing the BMS. That's all they need. <sighs> all right, glad we had this talk. Also, we haven't had any bear time yet. Who did, bear, 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 bear. Look at these people. They want to see you. <laughs> He's just sitting here with me. He'll just sit down right here. As I was uh, talking, he just hopped in here. Uh, he's an old goofball. If you ever come and visit us, he does like to bark. He will definitely let everybody know that you're here, but give him uh, hmm, anywhere from two to three minutes and he'll be sitting on your feet just like he's doing with me here. All right, so back to this project. Uh, what we did here was uh, same thing as we do a lot of times. Uh, the compartment we're working in is over there. We ran the wires underneath the the belly pan there, and it popped up in a compartment over there. Uh, you're going to make me crawl in there, aren't you? All right, all right, let's go in here. All right, I'm in. And uh, so anyway, they come up here, and then there's a area right there. You can see it. That's where all the wires come up. So we ran these the fresh set of solar wires here that's coming down from that satellite access port right there or the channel, the channel. And uh, that's where the AC mains come up over there and you can see we got some running over there to the shore power plug and then we got another one running over there to the main panel. And then the HDMI and USB cables also run over there. So that makes for a nice clean run where we don't need to have any wires exposed in here at all. So we're pretty much ready to just got to cable clamp this up here. There we go. Up that up there. And then uh, we can close this off and this is good to go. All right. So real quick inside, this is what we ended up doing. We did this on the last Grand Design Solitude. Because this pocket door is here, uh, we needed to step the screen out a little bit. And uh, we, while this oak uh, picture frame thing I made doesn't match this finish perfectly, I think it looks pretty nice. So uh, that's how that worked. And uh, you just gotta drill one hole right past through here. And using the endoscope, we were able to fish a line all the way down to that compartment down below. And then of course the, uh, the uh, main power panel there, you just connect the output of the MultiPlus into that and then everything works. 
All right, here we are up on the roof. Here's how this turned out. Uh, tilt kits all around, eight panels. I think we already talked about how we laid them out and why. Um, the plan is with these, there's a uh, like a, a hand nut on the back side of these. So you just gotta take an impact driver or something, a little driver, zip those off, and then you can stand the panels up and tilt them for the sun and uh, to get under there and clean if you want. Now the tricky part with this was I had to tilt up every panel to make sure that uh, I had enough slack in the line before I did it. So that definitely took a lot longer to wire. I would say this one took about twice as long as typical ones do. Um, but definitely had to have a good wiring game here too because all the wiring that typically we can hide underneath had to be exposed. So, and it's what it is, keeping me honest, right? Uh, all right, so yeah, here's everything else then too. And uh, we did check in the screen down below, it's making great power. The other thing people need to understand is uh, it's October now, uh, about 50% is what you can expect on something like this. Uh, it's just, we're at this latitude, we're at this time of year, that's why I recommend as much solar as possible as well. So uh, anyway, I already took my pictures, I got everything cleaned up, just double checking all my die core spots. Oh, I see one that I gotta add a little bit more to. But uh, other than that, we're good to go. All right, so here we are, it's all done. Got all our covers on here and everything turned out real nice. Really like how this works. Well, thanks for sticking around this long. We uh, had a lot of fun working on this project this week. Uh, the owners stayed here on property and that is something we do allow for those of you that are full-timers and you're looking to get this kind of work done. You're more than welcome to stay here and can't always promise weather this good. It's mid 60s, sunny, so it's October. Hard to beat it really, but uh, you are more than welcome to stay here while we do work on your RV. And uh, so um, if that's something you're interested in, check us out at sotasolar.com. Spelled like that down there, short for Minnesota. Um, we can put together a package for you and you could be boondocking having a good time, living your best life. So until next time, we'll catch you later.